happy day. Hello, my historical fashion friends. I'm going to show you how I made my wedding dress. So let's get started. If you like videos like this, you can hit the subscribe button. And if you uh, have made your own wedding dress, let me know in the comments down below. I am super excited to finally share this with all of you. I have been working on this video for a long time because there's a lot of clips and I just really love the way it came out and I Hope this helps anyone who wants to make their own dress for their wedding. This was super easy. Literally spent uh, less than $300, even though I switched my design halfway through. So uh, I guess I ended up spending $350, but then $50 worth of the stuff I didn't use. So let's get to it. Mogi's birthday cake. Mogi, you love it. So here were the inspiration photos that I had been collecting for like 10 years. And I really, really liked the idea of kind of an embroidered dress. So at first I wasn't actually sure that I wanted to make my dress and I actually ended up going to a lot of places to try on dresses, which I ended up really not liking any of them. They all seemed really generic and I really don't like those like fake rhinestone-y things. <laughs> and I thought I might like one with long sleeves because originally before COVID, I was going to be getting married in May. And then COVID happened and we had to postpone uh, a year and we ended up getting married in July instead which is good because the long sleeves um, looked like they were sheer and I have like a lot of arm hair and they looked really weird. Like it was really uncomfortable because my like hairs kept going through the tool and like itching me. So back to my inspiration photos, I didn't end up finding anything that really resembled what I was going for. And I just didn't like the way that the dresses I was trying on were looking on me. And so I decided, well, you know what? I'm sure I can make this myself. So commence fabric shopping. And here is the giant fabric haul I ended up getting, but something was missing. And then I found this fabric, which was absolutely gorgeous. And it was $17 a yard, but I didn't actually need that many yards because I ended up deciding to go with more of a slimmer A-line silhouette. Here's a picture of my grandparents on their wedding day, and I absolutely adore this photo, and they just look so happy and cute, and my grandma's dress is really pretty. At first I thought I might have wanted to replicate something like that, but after trying on all of the poofy dresses, I kind of changed my mind about that. Here are the two color schemes that I was considering, and we kind of ended up going more with the uh, one on the right with the darker colors. Even though it was in the summer, I just kind of like a more autumn palette. And then I did some draping and kind of testing out different ways that I wanted the skirt to look. And um, then I did some pattern designing while in the shower. So that is the wall of my shower, and I drew that with lipstick. And here is a sketch of what I originally thought it was going to look like, but the top ended up looking a lot different. Okay, so I have to say that putting together this paper printed out pattern was so much easier than the Regency patterns I had to put together for my um, Bridgerton outfits. Uh, there wasn't really a lot of crazy piecing and it is really easy to follow kind of where the pieces go. Um, 
The only thing is, I'm not putting a center front closing in my corset, so I am actually probably only going to use one of these two pieces. Um, as you can see, there's, there's two of them. Um, and just cut it on the fold instead because I'm only having a back lacing on my dress. But I definitely want to probably just trace a new version of this onto some um, plain like patterning paper that I have because I want to also make this actual pattern again later. Uh, and I kind of prefer not to have to tape it together again and print it out. So yeah, probably just gonna trace it. And this is the back piece, but I'm doing a very low back on my corset. So I'm gonna try to see, uh, I'm gonna do a moderate lowness on my first mock-up and then even more low on my second one. And of course, then there's the bust gussets and it says to cut four because there's usually two, but I have a really small bust and I have found it honestly kind of difficult to deal with having to put in two really tiny gussets. So I might just do like one slightly to the side medium gusset because I mostly need pushing from the side and I'm probably going to put some padding in as well. Um, and what I'm also going to do is kind of elongate this part um, because I noticed that a lot of them kind of go low and while that's good for like going under your arm, I also think that it doesn't give me like the push that I want for this dress. So we are going to try it out. Um, I also might play with kind of a bit longer of a hip gore because I kind of want to make sort of something that goes to cover, um, I guess parts you wouldn't want people in polite company to see, um, because it's basically gonna, fun gonna function as like my entire base layer. So I might actually kind of extend this down a little bit farther. So yeah, I actually bought these today, which I'm pretty sure I'm gonna stick inside of the um, corset because I need a bit of help. Okay. So I have made uh, my pattern adjustments uh, from the original pattern, which it kind of looks nothing like it now. Uh, this is the original size of the front, and this is the original back. And... I am going to make a version of this and see how it goes and then adjust the hip gores. I'm trying to figure out how to add the skirt. I think I'm going to use hooks and eyes and I'm going to do kind of like a piped, like some piping along the edge um, and then put the hooks and eyes underneath there so that the skirt can hang off of it and or maybe just attach to the hip gores itself um, because I still want to keep the hip gores but I want this point to be like a bodice point, uh, but also be the corset. So yeah. Um, or the bodice, see, because my problem is that I need the hip gores because I think it's going to be crucial for holding up the low back. Uh, but also I don't want the bottom of the corset to be under anything. Uh, so I can't have it just like the skirt underneath the corset because then the hip gores would be over on top of it. So we're going to see. I might also try making just a version of the corset without hip gores and see if it's uncomfortable or not. But I got this coutille from Richard the Thread in Los Angeles. Uh, apparently there's a coutille shortage, but I have this and... Uh, because the pattern is like not very big, I'm thinking I can at least get 
like two mock-ups done of this um, and the final product. So hopefully uh, this is gonna be on the fold. And then uh, this is just gonna be like this. So um, I guess it can't be on the fold because it is a diagonal, so it has to be sewn together in the front. Okay, noted. Yes, so this is gonna be cut to uh, anywhere <laughs> uh, because that's the grain line. And then this will just be like that. And uh, yeah, I could definitely get at least, at least three out of this. So that's awesome. And this is only, whoops, microphone. Uh, this is only one yard. So that is pretty bomb. And I have some synthetic whalebone coming from Burnley and Trowbridge. I also picked up heat erase markers for anyone who's been cringing at my horrific use of like actual pens and colored pencils on my fabric. I have heat erase markers and they were only like $20, but they were like locked at Joann's. And um, I was just like, oh, I guess these are a pretty high priority item because they're locked away. How many people can possibly be stealing heat pens? By the way, heat pens locked away, but disappearing ink pens and um, like washable pens, not locked away. So who knows? So yeah, I'm gonna trace this out um, and I am going to cut it up and make a practice version of this. Huzzah. Okay, so my first version was too short in the waist. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm really tall, like almost six feet tall. So I kind of expected that I was going to need to extend it down a little farther. Um, and I do actually feel like because I'm adding in um, the push-up thing, I'm going to need to actually add in one of the bust gussets probably this one uh, so i might do that and then see how that goes and other than that generally i liked the shape um i should have got some like easy attach eyelet thingies so that i could really tie it and then see how it goes um but i added a little over here so that i could fold this over and then have the eyelet holes uh, and yeah, overall, I am generally liking the shape. So let's get to the next version. Okay, so this is fitting how I want it to, and on the spot, oops, and on the spot that it hits the waist, I think that it's going to be right once I put all of the boning in and it probably shrinks a little bit and I attach the hip cores. Yeah, so huzzah. And uh, I'm gonna put some boning channels in. So this is my first mock-up and it's too short in the uh, waist for, for me. Uh, yeah, cause my waist is like actually like down down there and it's too short so yeah i'm gonna do another version and also i think it adds a, a bust gusset but just one okay i have now sewn all of my boning channels into this tester and i'm going to go put the boning in and try it on okay so 
Okay, like the sides are looking really good. Um, I don't know, I feel like it does need to somehow come in more at the waist, but maybe that's just with like shaping. And then, I don't know, somebody's not right in the front bit, but also I should probably put my, I'm gonna put the like bus pads in. It's kind of hard to like hold this and then also show you. But I feel like I need some sort of something in this area because it's not shaping correctly. Um, yeah, I probably need to put eyelets so I can like actually close it and see. Now you're Mogi, good boy. Stop it, Finston. Eat your worm. What's the matter with the mog I'm wearing? Can't you tell he's a chewy cat? Okay. He's so busy. Smokey. He doesn't uh. even listen to saying pss, pss. Okay, so I added the little hip parts. I'm just like holding it instead of actually having it uh, done. But I don't like the way the hip parts are, so I think I'm not gonna do them. Mm, the adjustments that I've done on this have turned it more into a 1780s corset, and I just think that the little hip bits are not necessary. And it was comfortable without it, so I'm just going to make it without these, and that's gonna make everything a lot easier because I'm just gonna be able to make the skirt part separate. So yeah, my mock-up is done and I am going to uh, get a one-sided presser foot for this. I wanna do some cording and that's gonna shrink down the size of this a bit cause it was completely meeting up in the middle, it had no gap. Uh, and then I've got these for doing my flossing uh, my uncle gave me these actually. And uh, yeah, this is like my tool for my first layer and just got a bunch of different colors of tool and we are going to uh, have a lot of fun putting this together. And yeah, I'm going to uh, cut out new versions of the cutile and then I'm gonna I'm going to do the method I saw on a tutorial. I can't remember who showed it, but they basically put extra of this, like the fashion fabric on top so that the cording bumped out the fashion fabric, but not the um, cutile. So yeah, I think I'm just going to make like the only adjustment I think that I'm gonna make on this is that I think I might just take the sides in a little, like the eyelet area, because it meets completely in the back and I don't really need it to, but the rest fits well. Um, Like, I don't want to change any of the areas on the front because everything hits where I really basically want it to hit. And I don't want to change that. So I'm probably just gonna take about maybe like a half an inch from either side on the uh, back here where the this part is. So let's just, this just gets like a little smaller. Oops, sorry. This just gets a little smaller. So it'll be more like that. And then <laughs> I'm really trying hard to gain weight. Um, I've been like trying to bulk for ages, but 
my ADHD meds and me being super busy just conspired to not allow me to gain weight. So, yep. We'll see if that actually happens. Okay, so here I have the uh, cutiel, which is going to be the inside of my bodice. And I have marked out all of my boning lines and cording lines and then um, the rest. It's not gonna be bone and cord, it's gonna have like embroidery going up through here. So that'll make it stiffer, but um, it's not going to be like fully boned or anything. And I've only got the one gusset. Uh, and then I'm just gonna cut it out next. The next step is to cut it out of the fashion fabric. So let's go. Okay, so I've put in all of my boning channels uh, and then I'm just gonna cut for my gusset and I've stay stitched the gussets as well. Okay, so I have just added in, uh, before I put the gussets into the, to the rest of the bodice, I added um, two rows of cording and then I have pressed over this and I also trimmed off some of the seam allowance here. So now I am going to stick this in there, pin it and sew it. Okay, so what I just did was just um, iron my seams down and now I am going to add in all of the boning to check the shape and see how that's looking. Um, here I've already got some of the cording in for this gusset. And then I think I'm gonna redo this middle seam because it didn't line up exactly perfectly. So I might actually match it up by hand and just like seam rip this out. Uh, to make sure that it's all perfectly even. Um, if I think it's fine, I might just put like embroidery up the middle, so I'm not sure. But I'm gonna add in my boning, put in some eyelets, and then I'm gonna try it on. Okay, so I have finished putting all of my synthetic whalebone into my bodice, and now I am just going to flip it over and draw out where I want to put my, um, I'm gonna do cording for the arched pieces, and I'm gonna do four rows of cording and then I think I'm also gonna do a little bit in here, um, just this side piece. And then I will uh, fold over these. Well, first I'm gonna pull out the middle and redo this center seam. And then I'm just going to fold over all of my seam allowances like trim them down and fold them over so it has a clean inside and also put in my eyelids uh, and then after all of that's done i'll just have to do piping and then i will work on embroidery and the skirt um, probably skirt first and then embroidery because i can always do less embroidery if i run out of time in order to match the line on the other side i just traced out the um basically the segment that was inside of the line. And then I created a piece so I can just trace next to it.
Hmm? Okay, so these are all half circle skirts. And this is it right now, which I like. I guess I should put this on the front. Hold on. Hmm. Like, I'm honestly not sure about the top now that I am, like, seeing it with the bottom. Because it just seems like this is very, like, floofy. And then this is, like, not. I mean, that's going to be... Like this and obviously this does not pull in as much because it's not a person oops so yeah I don't know the plan was to kind of do like one of these things with it because I really want it to be like strapless and hold itself up I kind of folded this back so we could see I don't know. Here we need to put the flowers on. So it kind of looks like this fabric looks like kind of bulky, you know? I also don't have the under part on, so maybe I should do that. Okay, so after all that, I ended up changing my mind. This is the pattern for what I ended up going with, and you'll see now how I ended up putting that together. So I, I'm not sure how to like make this pattern work, so I'm basically just going to like cut a circle here, and then kind of like, I guess, gather it? I'm not really sure. But I don't want the flowers to get like messed up. So I might have to like do some funny pattern thingy matching. Yeah. All right, let's take these two top pieces and sew them. Okay, I have sewn all of the tool layers together. I'm gonna make the first like bottom layer actually like a slip that's gonna go on the underneath layer. And then I have got my waistband, which I am um, pinning on here. And then I am going to uh, turn inside out the little top part. And then uh, gonna see how I want it to look on the mannequin. So yeah. Just clipping the corners here to turn this inside out. So I've sewed a ribbon, which is going to be part of the strap, um, just inside of this. So I can just like pull it out. Let's see if I can show you. So you just push the string through this little hole and then fold back these sides and then you can just sew it and the string will be secure and you can pull it right out the other side. Oops. And here is me trying on the dress without the top layers added uh, for the bodice, just the lining. Now I am just draping my fabrics to try to see where I want them to be placed on my bodice, where I want the different 
applique pieces to go on top of the bodice and I ended up cutting them out and then sewing them on afterwards once I had then draped on the first layers of tulle so that I could make the tulle layers on the bodice match the layers of the skirt. I basically just pinned on the various layers of tulle and then pinned them on so I could sew them by hand. And then I kind of realized I probably should have done that before I sewed the bodice onto the waistband because it was kind of awkward to then have to do that after. Right now, I am just going to kind of base this in place so I can take it off and rip out this seam and then re-sew it with the tool inside of the actual waistband. And I'm going to kind of attach it along this area as well. Unfortunately, this entire video is out of focus. I really don't know why, but yeah it just is completely not in focus the entire time as i am basting this uh, outside layers onto my bodice so i can sew them later so i discovered that my top was a little loose so i have just like kind of folded it down and i am going to fix it here and then see how it goes Okay, so I have the like bra pads pinned in. Um, this is gonna loop in the back, but I'm just holding it up for now. And I decided to do, um, I'm tying the ribbon. There's like a ribbon that's attached here. And I'm going to tie that at the neck. That's like a little backup, you know, um, just in case. I kind of wanted like, I don't know, I was thinking maybe I should put bones in or something, but I don't think it'll work. But, um, yeah, this is basically it. And then, um, I'm just going to do the last step of, like, putting on just a few of these little doodads. And then uh, we'll be done. I had to, like, really fix this. Because... The, my mannequin has not the same torso as me. So, yeah. But I am happy. Huzzah. Also, y'all my new trainer. Swole Patrol. I'm gonna have like a, I can't show you my back, whatever. I'm gonna have dope back muscles. Okay, so I have basted this um, tool onto the top and now I'm just going to sew it in here and then fold this side over and uh, secure it all in place. So we are on the final steps, just going to pin the little bra pads in and then have to add this ribbon to tie in the back. I have this all pinned up and then I am going to add this to cover up all of the seams inside uh, and it's really strong so it will add more stability to the waistband. Do that. And then I am just going to put these little loops like back here to tie these two. And, uh, and then I have these bars and hooks to attach to uh, make it stay on.
Well, I tried to like do a twill tape binding on this, but it really shows through to the other side. So I am just going to cut this off and then use like fray check or something. Or like not even care. I mean, it'll probably be fine. It's one day. <laughs> yeah. Still, there's still something like wrong with my bodice, which I think is that I didn't, where is it? No, I, didn't. I didn't do like a, a, I didn't take it in like here and I feel like maybe that's the problem, but it's also kind of like not big enough. I should have done like a dart, but I don't really think I needed to because like I literally am like a board in the front of my body, but this just like almost doesn't cover enough. So I was thinking of like maybe just adding this to the edge and maybe that will kind of like make up for it yeah so like weirdly this does fit totally fine on my mannequin but on me it is like weird i think it's because my mannequin is more conical shaped and i am more like narrow like if you look at me from the side i'm more like this and more like that so even though she's the same measurements She's not like the same dimensions. Um, I think I have to tuck that in just a little bit. I just have to finish putting this up. Yeah. And then if I like want there to be this lace, maybe. Hold on. Okay, so I also have to move these because they should really be here. That's what I discovered when I put it on. So the last piece for my dress is just to cut out this embroidered cap that I made and go and stitch it on my dress. Me too. Uh, oh, sorry. Going to cut out um, around it and then fold back over the gray linen and then just use the tool to sew it on. What are you doing? Stop that. And here is my mother-in-law so kindly trimming the hem of my skirt and just making it have a little train. And there was actually a place in the back where we could tie it up afterwards for the dancing. Fantastic spiral staircase with a giant gong. Huh. It's a it's a historical fashion book. Well. Amazing armor. Lovely. 
so gross. <gasps> now that is very exciting. That. Say good morning to this peacock. <laughs> um, this is the view out my window. There's little sheepsies there. Uh, this little squawker likes to make noise. And we're in a very lovely house with lots of excellent historical pictures um, everywhere. There's these shutters to block out the light. Uh, I didn't make the bed, obviously. Everything here is like ultra historical. I'll show you downstairs too, which is like super extra. Um, this is like a dressing room. This lady. And then I'll play something really fun. There's a, this is a scale and you sit on it and then you can weigh yourself with these little weights, which is really cool. And now I'm going to take you on a stroll through the whole Bees family. Um, so the Willoughby's in the chest family. Mm -hmm. oh. Also, you could just mix. Oh my goodness. Um, tea or coffee? Hello,
literally coming back to find this and discovering I had drawn in the dart. But I didn't sew in the dart. So that explains like basically every problem I had with my dress. Uh, yep, pretty classic. Okay, so I'm gonna show you all how this closes. So the straps are in the front, cross in the back, and then there are two loops here and they just tie in the middle so it pulls it closer together and then uh, my mannequin doesn't squish as much as I do. So there's two hooks and eyes and I actually hooked this one onto that and this one here onto this one and then it just ties and that's basically it. Yeah, super easy. Here's my little kitty. Uh, 